Okay, we're gonna do a simple two-point anchor. Um, two-point anchors are most easily constructed in a uh, load sharing uh, configuration where uh, the resultant won't self-equalize. So we really need to nail down our direction of pull or, or our resultant line um, right from the get-go to make sure that we, we bring everything to a central focus and fix it, um, and hence load sharing. Um, so if you look over here on these anchors, uh, I've already done wrap through pull twos with carabiners. That's just gonna make it a lot easier uh, for us to rig this. I could just take this cord and start wrapping around these objects, but so much friction exists when I'm trying to actually tie my system together into a focus that uh, it actually makes it a lot more cumbersome. So on the front end, if I can do this, uh, every time I will. Um, so I have my cord that I'm gonna tie my anchor together with and I'm just gonna start anywhere it doesn't really matter and I'll clip in I'll come to the other one I'll clip in okay now I, I don't want to do the Yosemite death triangle here and just tie this off uh, because we have these resultant forces that are acting that are amplifying directionally through here um, when this hits loaded so instead I want to equalize or and bring a bite down and tie this off. This angle is pretty wide, um, so I'd, I wanna avoid doing that. If my anchor points are very far apart, um, a good trick uh, to do is to kind of clip your core through all these carabiners, and then you know, if you wanna zoom in on my uh, belt. So right here, I'm just gonna open up a carabiner on what would be my harness, um, and I'm gonna bring this in as well. And I'm also going to bring the tail in here as well. And I just need to hold on to the tail or, or whatever. And I'm going to give myself like an arm span of tail uh, to actually kind of tie this. Um, the more anchor points I have, if I go to three point anchor system, I need more tail. The knot's going to be bigger. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk back holding this and letting everything else pay out. As I walk back, you can see my cantonary angle starting to get narrower. Um, and I can also, as I walk, I can also move left or right and pinpoint where my resultant's gonna be. So sometimes it doesn't always bisect these anchors perfectly. Maybe it's gonna be over here and this is all I've got. Um, I wanna do everything I can to try to, to bisect these angles, but sometimes uh, and most often it, it's just not in the deck of cards. So um, right here, that's about, less than 45. Um, I can probably set it right here, tie my knot, and it'll be a little bit further back and the angle will be just, just fine. So I still have the tail that I need, uh, more than enough to tie this. I'm gonna unclip from the carabiner. And what I'm gonna do is, you know, if you wanna like step over this so you can actually see how it gets tied. This is called, um, basically it's called a frost knot, right? So I have, uh, the tail, and then where the rest of the cordage came from. Everything beyond this point is excess I don't need. Um, my resultant is this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the bite out of all of this material, and I wanna have a big enough bite that I can actually tie the knot. The thicker my rope is, uh, the longer of a bite I need. Um, so again, I want to make sure that I can actually tie this. Um, and I can do an overhand, I can do a figure eight, doesn't really matter. I can throw in a carabiner while I'm tying the knot um, to act as an anti-crush. Um, and what that's gonna do is help me untie this knot after I use it for my anchor system. So this would be an, an overhand um, right here. If I do an overhand, I could consider putting an anti-crush carabiner in. And this carabiner doesn't do anything else except uh, just make untying this knot easier when all is said and done. And so you just dress it up every strand through. And this carabiner, the universal sign um, of an anti-crush painter is, if you have a screw lock preferred, um, you would just do that. And everybody knows that, okay, that's, intended just to just be like a stick, uh, more or less. Um, so I'll get rid of the anti-crush painter. And again, overhands and figure eights are the two most common ways to actually 
tie your frost knot into a load sharing focus or focal point as they say so again i bring them i, I make sure my resultant's good i bring that bite in and this time i'm just going to do a figure eight i'm going to try to keep this as clean as possible sometimes it's not always possible but feed those strands through all right now come over and, um, from my perspective and then i'm going to cinch down on all these cords okay and the way i know that i've tied this correctly when i'm doing this is i'm going to start counting simple math all right so let's see what we have here on the back end we have one two three four five tail and six the excess so that's six cords or pieces that are exiting the knot out there i should have six over here and if i look well i have three bites so one each bite is two one two three four five six so i have six and six i didn't miss anything and when i tied my knot um and then i can weight this and if you look back my resultant is going back that way which is what i wanted to begin with my angle is definitely less than 90 but between 30 and 90 so this whole piece line that's kind of like your 30 degrees that's where I want to operate um, that shares um, the tension uh, between each, each anchor point uh, well um, again load sharing because watch if my result shifts watch this stays taut this goes completely slack and so I really need to nail down my resultant when I'm doing these anchors otherwise um, I kind of screwed up so um, that's load sharing right there. It shares the load only when you have your resultant identified and it's pulling at that correct angle. Otherwise, it won't self-equalize.